Welcome to Design Quick Bytes with Saito University College Design. Hey, hi everyone. Welcome to Design Quick Bytes with Saito University College Design School. Um, I'm your host. multimedia I teach uh, animation and video production all right um, so the topic for today uh, for this quick bite uh, session is about video videography and video production and we have a guest for you today which is mr. Baron so before we go further with that I would like to talk a little bit about uh, Saito University College uh, and what we are doing and uh, of course towards the video production areas. Okay, so I'm going to share the slides. Okay, as you can see, um, we have a borderless classroom experience in Saito University College. What it means is we expose students to not just uh, in the class activities, the class assignments, we also involve students with outside projects and I mean real life projects and even the competitions and stuff like that. Um, so the one that you see here uh, is our recent collaboration with MOG. So MOG is a Metro Optical group it's a, it's a it's an eyewear company uh, where we did a, a collaboration basically our students are involved uh, creating their digital content in for the in videography and also social media all right so as you can see here so these are the sort of a pre-animated animation that we have and the kind of like uh, advertisement that we did for them. All right, so those, uh, these are the example of how our student involved with uh, the MOG to create their, you know, video, videography and also their social media. And uh, yeah, so these are the, the things that they have to achieve. And with doing real project, uh, they get more better experience, I mean, like real experience. Okay, so Saito University College we are also an award-winning uh, students, right? We have, so what we have here, we also involve students with a lot of competitions, all right? And it's also supported by the lecturers and professionals that are involved with Saito um, to, you know, to get them uh, be more competitive in terms of joining competition and all that, all right? So build competitive spirits, uh, build linkage with industry, that's also one of our tasks, uh, building networks with employers, uh, build their designer persona, 
All right, that one is very important. They need to craft their own originality and and make sure they have the attitude and uh, and the mindset of a designer. And then you understand the whole design expectation and environment. All right. So here um, we have uh, in Taito Design School, we have a first year experience mentor. So we assign uh, all the experienced lecturer to be to handle on, uh, on a different tiers of the study. So for example, as you can see, there's me. Uh, basically, I'm mentoring the diploma. Uh, year one for for the yeah, first year student. Uh, we got fast forward program mentor headed by uh, Mr. Sid Fami together with Mr. Eric Lee. And then uh, foundation mentor is uh, Mr. Alex Chu. And then undergraduate year two mentor is uh, Mr. Sun Meng Kyung. And then Ms. Sophia Minor, undergraduate year one mentor. Okay, uh, award-winning students. All right, so we also have supported by the master trainers, right? So these are the professionals that are from the industry itself, and they are our master trainers. So we have for interior design, we have Ian Davies from Art Radius. Uh, we have Alan Lee, uh, which is an ex Naga DDB which is an advertising agencies. Uh, we have Tato Aflin Shauki, a film director and video production specialist. And Dato Norman Abdul Halim, president and CEO of KRU Entertainment. All right, so just going through this a bit, um, talking about you know, video production, what we need to know about the current state, you know, since pandemic and all that. So let's see the growth of video production. So because Video production, a lot of people have this mindset that's saying that oh, video production is kind of kind of dead uh, during the pandemic, but actually it's not that bad, all right? So let's see the, the edX digital advertising expenditure. So overall digital edX growth. So basically, uh, it's actually reportedly, it grew 5%, all right? Uh, to RM233 million in quarter three, 2020 versus quarter three, 2029. So as you can see here, um, it kind of grows, all right? The reason of the increase of 5% is because uh, a, lot, a lot of uh, audiences, they don't go out. They stay at home during the lockdown and uh, video is the, their main consumption. So uh, even though um, video content is not produced normally uh but video content are still being produced uh you know uh, to cater this mass uh, viewers right so you can see um video that is produced both uh on the social media right also increase itself all right if you have any further inquiries regarding um Saito University College and its design courses, uh, you can give a call to the numbers on the screen here and we will attend to it, all right? Now, without further ado, uh, I would like to invite Mr. Baron, which is uh, his full name is Baronia Abbas, all right? He's a film director and a lead trainer uh, in his own company, which is a Wolf Fang Digital, he is also Apple Certified Pro for Final Cut, Pro Certified Glide Cam Instructor, Certified Train the Trainers, and also Sony Key Opinion Leader. So, without further ado, let's invite Mr. Baron on the floor. Hi everyone, it's Baron here with Saito College, Saito University College with Mr. Uzainis. How are you, Mr. Uzainis? Hey, fine, Baron. Fine. How are you? How are you doing? I'm great. I'm great. It's in the... Uh, we, we're having some hot, hot weather nowadays towards the end <laughs> of the year, but otherwise, yeah. weather here is great. <laughs> All right. 
Well, you you have a very interesting background there. Yeah, but you see over there, one of my one of my screens <laughs> isn't really working. Can you can you guys see that? One really? of the screens there. Hello, oh, can we switch working. on TV number twenty five? Yeah, one of the screens isn't working over there. <laughs> 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 you like my studio? Hey, nice, nice. I believe this is uh, one of your new technology or something. Yeah, we we do we actually our company we've been doing a lot of uh, live streaming. If you've been listening, I hope you've been listening to Mr. Uzainis earlier on, because uh, although the pandemic has hit us pretty hard, uh, we're still in business. We're still doing video production in a form of live streaming. So we've been doing a lot of live streaming, and because live streaming is borderless, we are able to reach out to audiences from all over the world. So in live streaming, mm -hmm. uh, well, live streaming is one of the highest discipline of video production. Making. So, you know, live streaming involves everything that is videography, video production related. And uh, the way we, we get this studio done is using green screen or known to some of you as chroma key. Yeah, so this is mm -hmm. something you will learn when you uh, sign up with uh, Saito Uni. Well, yeah, speaking of which, um, regarding the green screen and all that, right? Uh, yeah. I just want to talk a little bit, uh, take a little bit of your time. I just want to squeeze in a little bit about uh, something new about uh, in video production collaboration that we have uh, for Saito University College and together with uh, this company called the Six in the City. All right. So um, Six in the City is basically... Uh, we are doing collaboration with them. They are actually uh, uh, our official training center, okay, where they have like an advanced technology of virtual stage, you know, virtual green screen, and, uh, you know, did this kind of like live, for, for kind of live broadcasting stuff. So uh, for those of our students who are in, involved in, I mean, who sign up, uh, let's say, in a, in a digital media or degree in digital media or diploma in multimedia uh you you guys get basically uh, are able to get to enjoy the collaboration with the six in the city uh so to entice you all so i wish i want to show this video for a while all right so this video is um showing how six in the cities and our saito university college collaboration okay
All right. So that's about, that's to give you a glimpse of the collaboration that we are doing with Six in the City. By the way, the owner of Six in the City is Mr. Alan Lim, which is also our master trainer. All right, uh, back to you, uh, Baron. Nice to be back, Mr. Yuzainis. So, yeah. how can I help you today? What should we talk about? Yeah, we're going to talk about video production, of course. <laughs> That's your right. Uh, All right. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Video production um, is a large, it's, video production is huge, guys and girls. It is big. It's big, meaning there are so many ways to get into video production. There are so many ways to work in video production. So I'm going to ask Mr. Yuzainis over here to share one of the videos that uh, I have prepared with him. And through that video, right, maybe you can get a glimpse into my world as well as to see if anything over here can inspire you. I'm going to show like a behind the scenes video. Uh, Mr. Yuzainis can go ahead and play it and I will be giving a bit of commentary. I'm going to show you a little bit about Wolfang Digital, which is my video production team. So as Wolfang mm -hmm. Digital, we are a 20, that's right, two decades old company. We've been around. We've been around for a long time. And my team and I, we shoot videos on land, sea, and in the air. And we produce videos from TV commercials to TV shows, corporate videos, and all the way to like vlogs and also YouTube videos, promotional videos. You name it, we've probably done it before. Now, Mr. Yuzainis, are you ready with the video? Yeah. We can show it to everyone here as the video plays on. We will, I will talk about it and Mr. Yuzainis maybe can give me some opinions or maybe we can have a bit of a, a back and forth to get to know more about my world and see if it's also going to be your world in the future. Are we ready? All right. Okay. Okay, here we go. So, yeah, over here, right, we have a behind the scenes look. So this is me as I work with my team uh, to produce, you know, like commercials, promotional videos, and we do use some of the high-tech gadgets. So we're always uh, in step, in line with the latest technology that is around to help us get the best possible footage. This is what you see in videography, which means where the film is being shot. So we have a team to work with us. We work with a team to get all these gorgeous shots. And here we have like acrobats. And also here you have like a corporate video being made, promotional video being made. So actually this behind the scenes is featuring a gimbal to get you really, really stable shots, right? As the camera bounces around, as the camera moves around, it will isolate all these uneven moves and produce very smooth video. Because smooth video, sharp video, that's what we want for videography. So this is just the shooting part. What we have later on is the video editing and that's in the uh, post-production process. And through it all, you'll get yourself the video and that's where the client will pay you money to produce videos to market their products and services. And, and so, Mr. Yuzanis, any comments, you can just jump right in because uh, yeah, what sure. I want to talk to you next, right, is you've been thinking that videos are made on land. Well, that is very true. Videos are made on land and that's what you've been thinking so far, right? But Mr. Yuzanis will be playing another video which will feature videos being shot in the ocean. That's right, submerged under the sea. Okay, anytime now, Mr. Yuzanis, while I entertain our brothers and sisters, our students here. Okay. So this up. is a video. Yeah. This is a video being shot under the ocean. And most of the time I am shooting this, I am being tossed about by waves. Let me lower down the volume a little bit and right. I'm going to tell them about how I shot this. Now, shooting under the ocean is possible. Once you're a certified scuba diver, you can bring your cameras into the ocean. There, you will be faced with a whole bunch of challenges. One of it being 
the lack of air. So you only have a limited time to be able to get all the shots that you need. Second, you'll be toast, tossed about by waves. So you need to maintain a very cool, calm composure. You need to be able to get the shots even with all these challenges around. And one of the biggest challenge is buoyancy where you don't want to be floating up and floating down and, and, and going up and going down as you get the shots. So that was videos being shot under the ocean. Right? That is a whole new skill set over there and an opportunity for you guys to start, for you guys, for you girls. Uh, this is an opportunity for you to start your own career here. Next, right, we're going to look at videos that are shot above us in the sky using drones, unmanned aerial vehicles. Mr. Yuzanis, are you ready for the third video lah? <laughs> now, <laughs> All right. yeah. So this is a little montage video, right, that I put together for you to have a look. And drone videos are getting so, they've been popular, but they're getting even more popular nowadays because from the air, you are shooting videos from angles which people have never seen before. And a lot of companies are paying money for you to shoot their videos from the air. So this, what line is this? This is aerial videography, aerial photography, most used by real estate developers and most used by short films, even feature films. So this is shooting videos using unmanned aerial vehicles and something that I have experience with. I'm also a drone pilot as well as a drone instructor. Mr. Yuzanis, anything you'd like to add to mm. that? Yeah, before we go any further, I just want to ask you about, um, do you need to take a license to be a, a drone operator? Okay, uh, that, that's a really good question, Mr. Yuzanis, and I'm sure mm. I will calm your nerves as I tell you that you will need to have a license to scuba dive. You will need right. a license to scuba dive. However, to fly a drone, you don't need a license. Actually, you don't really need a license, but you need to be, you need to get approval from the Civil Aviation Authority of Malaysia if you're flying a drone. Okay, that all these details we will cover during our fast forward program or during your class in uni. So you need to get approval from the Civil Aviation Authority of Malaysia which governs all aviation aircrafts and flights in Malaysia. Also, that's just for flying your drone. However, if you are taking photos in the air, you also need approval from the military. That's right. That is through yeah. JUPEM, Jabatan Permetaan, Jabatan Permetaan Malaysia. So Malaysia. that is right. the mapping, the, mm -hmm. the mapping uh, administration for Malaysia. You, if you are going to record films from the air, you need their approval as well. So you need at least these two to be able to shoot videos in the air as you fly a drone. Yeah. All right. Um, so, one last question regarding the drone, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you have a uh, formal training or is just, or may, or is just, uh, learning learning from mistake or try and error so how, how do you actually learn ah. to fly a drone professionally okay another fantastic question from mr yuzainis now the the thing is he's asked you these questions so that you don't have to be crashing your drone and learning from trial and error because <laughs> learning through mistakes with your drone that is going to be very 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 costly mahala kalau awak nak belajar terbang drone eh? Dengan mm -hmm. cara sendiri, sebab you mm -hmm. are going to go through trial and error. Uh, is this right? Uh, is that right? What if? What happens if I do this? Okay, you, you know, every time you smack your drone onto something, you're going to cause major damage to your drone. So, it's better you have someone who, exactly like what Mr. Yuzani said, you get the proper trainer to help you out with your drone flights so that you do not have any trial and error at all. So as drone instructors, what we will normally help our students when they start a drone course with us, right, is we get them to practice on simulators. Simulators is like what the real pilots do when they fly planes. They will go through a simulator. They will learn through a simulator, which is computer-based, which means you can crash as much as you like. Crash, go ahead and crash. Do this, see what happens. 
right? Because all yeah. those crashes are all simulated. So you don't actually lose your drone, you don't actually lose your plane. Yeah, so it is best that you take up drone training through an instructor who is an experienced drone pilot. Uh, we don't want to do trial and error <laughs> with that because it's going to be pretty costly. Maybe yeah. Not just to you, but also to the people or the property that is around you. If the drone crashes, mm -hmm. you're going to be causing a lot of problems for the people around you as well. <laughs> yeah. And human life too, you know. <laughs> yeah. Because if, it, if, the drone, life, right? if you accidentally bang a drone to someone, uh, oh, that's yeah. like, yeah, you're really going to be, you know, paying for it. So yeah, because those blades, they may look like they are not mm -hmm. doing much damage, but those blades yeah. spinning at such high revolutions, right, they can really cut. <laughs> yep. Yeah, so you don't want to be doing trial and error. Yeah. It's not a toy stuff. Yeah, it's, okay, not, so it's not a toy. Hmm. Shall we move on to the next section? Ah, so there hmm. are some of you, right, who think maybe you want to get into the video production line. So to get into the video production line, because it's so huge, you want to know where you fit in. And in video production, I think the most famous role would be as a film director. So maybe you have the vision to become a film director. And how do you go about doing it? So to become a film director, right, uh, you, you want to be going out there and making films. You want to be shooting, shooting, shooting. Editing, 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 sharing, sharing, sharing. Okay, you, you can make films out of any like experiences in your life, uh, your adventures, your outings, your travels. You can make films out of that. Mr. Uzanis will show us the next video over here, which I thought when I made this, it was just for fun uh, together with some friends and a club. You know, it's, it's a club, so we got together and they said, Hey, Baron, can you help us to, to document, to shoot this adventure of ours? So I'm going to show you a different kind of adventure um, that is produced in the sea. Not under the sea, but above the sea. So Mr. Zainis will play us that video and this is called Storm the Sea. And right. videos like this, right, you want to be creating you just go out there as a as a budding film director someone who wants to be a I film director a go X3, out there shoot shoot Stand shoot edit the edit edit create your stories create your stories zoom get the experience so build like yourself up most ex most important zoom. is to like build your experience and you know doing simple videos like this where you travel with a group of friends you go to strange different places that will give you inspiration that will give you a really really important when you want to achieve a goal when you want to achieve your dreams you know especially like in video production it's always about experience you know so you need to build up your experience so which means go out there and get your films made. Right. Films, right? When you start making films, it's always, I tell my students, it's always start from paper. What is the most important tool when you are making a film? It is your paper or even using your phone, not the camera yet, not the camera yet, but your notepad. The most important tool for a film director when you're starting out, when you're creating your story, the most important tool, I feel, is actually your notepad where you get to write out your notes. You get to, you get to decide how you want to plan your story. So this is really important. Everybody has a notepad. Everybody has, has, has a computer or at least pen and paper. Use that. Plan your story. Then, later, we go out and shoot it. Right? Like, for example, over here, I'm spending my days and nights with this crazy flirts who are fishing in the middle of a freaking storm. Can you imagine that? It's like the whole world is turning upside down, right? And these guys, all they care about is to get the fish. <laughs> See, the fish that I just caught, right? The fish I just caught is totally worthless. <laughs> After we caught it, we throw it back into the ocean because we're not going to eat it. So that's called a remora. Yeah. Mr. Zainis, anything you want to add to this? 
Well, uh, nothing much, but it looks really, really fun. <laughs> I think yeah. uh, one one most important thing about learning video production is you must have fun, right? So when exactly. you have fun, you be able to create, you know, very, very nice experience and also, uh, you know, very nice video output at the end of the day, you know. Yeah. You are right. You, Zainis, he is right. You need to have fun because without the fun factor, right, uh, whatever you do, it's going to be boring and after a while, you're not going to want to do it anymore. But one good thing about video production, it's always fun. It's just how much fun you're going to have. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That is the thing that you need to control. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. <laughs> I mean, if you have yeah. too much fun, then you might be out of hand. But yeah, out at the hand, end, right? video production is always fun, right? Yes, always it's always fun, fun. Always a new challenge, always there's something like a yeah, hurdle that you need to get through and I mean, it's still fun at the end of the day. Yeah, it's like uh, you're meeting new people, you're trying out new things when you're yeah. making films, right? Because you're not, you're not sure, you, you don't know what's the next film you're going to make. So it's always like a journey into the unknown, but fun lah. <laughs> what right, we're going to um, show you, yes. Hmm. Shall we move on to the next video because uh, our session is targeted to be not that long. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. In, in yeah. that case, mm. in that case, maybe you put me back up onto the big screen, and uh, right. uh, let me see. That means I get to I get to choose what I want to show. Okay, so let's see. Mm, I think I will show you a video which uh, people don't often get to see. Mm -hmm. uh, a peop. Uh, a video that people don't often get to see because this is a video not about people. So mm -hmm. we're going to be playing a video. We're going to get back down into the ocean and we're going to learn about marine life. And this video is called, since it's, okay, right now, uh, you're going to be coming to the night. You're going to be coming to, towards night. So we're going to embrace the night with this video. Mr. Zainis, you can play it anytime you're ready. This and let's the next video, right? The next video, right? The last one. The last one. The last one. The last oh, last okay. one. Because you said we, we did not have enough time, right? Okay. And we still then, we still have like we can play two more videos actually. Two more videos. Okay, fine. Yeah. Then um let's play the second last one. Lah. The second last, last one, one yeah? uh right. which is okay. So I'm going to take you into the air first. All right, I'm going to take you into the air where we're going to use our drone to shoot videos in the air, right? Like you've seen it before, right? But this time in the dark of night, in total darkness, I'm going to show you how your Kuala Lumpur city looks like at night. All right. Second last video. Ah, see, this is how beautiful Malaysia looks like at night from the air. Have you seen so much beauty in a city that is in total darkness? So, enjoy this video. And Mr. Zainis, if you've got anything you want to ask me, this is a commentary. We can talk about it as the video progresses. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I am shooting this video for the Embassy of Tajikistan. So this is a video that, that we produce for an embassy uh, because it is their Independence Day. So KL Tower is putting their flag colors onto the building. And so we are shooting this. You can see the KL mm -hmm. CC. The Petronas Twin Towers in the distance. Yes. So nice. for, um, for videos like this, do you like what kind of? Uh, are you shooting this using a drone or are you shooting this on a helicopter or? Yeah. So all of these videos, right? This entire clip was shot with a drone, without any help from a helicopter, because helicopters. Mm -hmm. Uh, you have problems trying to fly close to objects and you are creating a lot of noise 
you know, and uh, with a drone, you're able to get closer to subjects, you're able to get a lot of beautiful angles that helicopters sometimes cannot give you. Mm -hmm. And one of the best mm -hmm. things about shooting with a drone is uh, mm -hmm. you can do this with a two-man team. I highly recommend a two-man team instead of a one-man show because a two-man or a two-girl team, uh, you get to look after each other. Uh, as opposed to if it's in a helicopter, you need a bigger team and you are putting yourself at risk if you're shooting from a helicopter because you need to be yeah. able to lean outdoors. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so this is all done with an unmanned aerial vehicle or now commonly affectionately known as drones. Lah. So that is the Tajikistan flag over there on the DBKL tower. This video is for them. And yeah. That's a good take. I'm at 40 endurance. Yeah, so shooting shooting with drones is always such such fun. But of course the, it it's mm -hmm. all yeah. The the camera that you use, right? Uh is it the built-in drone cameras or is it a special camera that you use to attach to the camera to the to the drone? Uh -huh. Because see, so you know it has a very good low light uh, controls. So that's oh, I was wondering, right, right. does it come from the built-in uh, with the drones camera or yeah, you attach um, a special camera to the drone? In, in this case, this is a built-in camera of the drone oh. and because yeah. of right now, drone cameras have become so advanced and uh, they, they are able to film like almost in total darkness. So this mm -hmm. is a built-in camera. You just have to know how to control the cameras, how to adjust its settings, and you can get really gorgeous shots even though it is so, so dark at night. So this is uh, actually a built-in camera uh, that is already on the drone itself. Oh, it seems that it has a very good low-light uh, controls. No. Yeah, I'm so. Ah, uh, no, because the I I didn't in this case because the drone that that we have has a pretty sophisticated camera. So uh, mm. what we have there is the built-in one, and and it's it's gorgeous because flying at night presents a different kind of challenge where you know if your camera is not good enough, you will not know what you will not know where you are flying to, you will not know mm. what you're coming up against. So your, your camera better be good if you want to fly at night because it's the only thing that is helping you navigate the darkness. <laughs> yeah. yeah, definitely. It's the only eyes for the drones, ah, right? That's your, hmm. that's, your own, that's your only eye, but uh, mm -hmm. do remember that you're flying as a team. So you have a partner on the ground and your partner mm -hmm. will be known as the spotter or the oh, observer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so he or she will be helping you to keep line of sight, visual line of sight with your drone. He or she will be telling you whether your drone is clear or not. So if at any one time your camera is not giving you the visual feedback that you need to pilot your drone safely, your spotter slash observer will be able to warn you and tell you, okay, not clear, not clear. And then, mm -hmm. you know, you have to bring your drone back safely to its uh, takeoff point via the guidance of your spotter slash observer. Yeah, so this is uh, some of the uh, the safety mm -hmm. that we have in place. All right. Shall we move on to the next? Okay. Video? So, right. from the mm -hmm. air, we're going back down, down, down into the ocean. Lah. <laughs> <laughs> the ocean. All right. Into the ocean and we're going to embrace the night. Okay, let's hit it. Let's do this. Nothing. May the light be with us. I switch on my torch, and then the ocean reveals itself. Let's play it back again, Mr. Zainis, because uh, they creatures. missed, they so missed that part where ambush. they can't really? really see how dark the ocean is at night. Let's play it all the way from the beginning again because we oh, missed okay. that part. Now, right. ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, right? I will show you mm -hmm. how dark is it in the ocean at night. Okay. Oh, all right. Video shooters and scuba shooters, I'm all geared up for a night dive. 
Blah, 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 blah. Let's go, let's go, let's go, lah. <laughs> How do you feel, eh? How do you feel before you, you know, go to this adventure? Do you feel like I switch off afraid, my scared, and then you know, because you're going into the darkness. As a home to well, of creatures. um, Some are you don't, you don't, you predators. don't feel the anxiety feel yet because away, you really don't know how dinner. dark it is. People will tell you, well, it's dark mm -hmm. because it's and at night, right? So like you'll be thinking, well, I've been out in the it dark before at night, you know, me. because uh, it, on land you have strip lamps, you have building lights, and the darkness isn't really darkness. But once you go into the, yeah, once you get into the sea, right? Right? There are no street lamps for you, black spot nothing out there is giving you even a speck of light. Of hard so without, without your torches, without your underwater shy, video torches, right, or without your dive torch, you one is to come it's, like, it's, it's like you're face to face with a, a wall and you uh -huh. won't even I know what's in front of you. Off you go. Sure. Some fish take personal space and more seriously marine life than tend to become like very active really at night. So if you want to see all these this beautiful, colorful creatures, right, the, the best time is actually to go in at night. Of coral but of course then, at night, it presents its own challenges when you like shoot underwater at night. Love. Slower because firstly, you see the sea, you've seen the sea urchins, right? Comes out at night. You know, and if as a diver, it's very hard to look back because you you are not the sure what's behind you. Fish. You don't have a fins. Well, that's it. <laughs> There'll be lots of things on you. Predators. Yeah. Uh, so it has its own challenges. So you just have to learn how to overcome these challenges. You have to know your limits, especially. This guy, this guy over here. In plain sight. This one he is not dangerous. He's pretty timid. And you cool, won't know right? if he's in just right next to you. Because this cuttlefish is a master of disguise to give their disguise a more authentic See. feel just like the corals it was trying to mimic yeah this guy can be just right next to you you won't even know about it now the this spines. The bold this flour is fish. venomous it's poisonous to those foolish enough the to spines will actually sting you pretty bad given us a so you also have to know about marine life you know not just stick steps to reduce not just take the videos but you also got to know subscribe the marine life around like you to respect them the and also episode. to know what you are coming up against and you have to know the behavior of the fish so that you are able to take good shots mm -hmm. uh, so that is underwater videography lah. <laughs> yeah <laughs> nice nice very good yeah, sharing, so, uh, Mr. Barry. Ah, thank you. So, videography, uh, uh, my, the, your, your take back should be videography is a huge, huge industry. It's three different frontiers, land, sea, and air as well. Mm -hmm. So, where will you shoot next? <laughs> Hopefully, it uh, can also be in space. <laughs> Ah, the but that would be a very frontier. expensive one. <laughs> uh, right? Well, you never know, you know, in the future, it could be cheaper as, you know, technology yeah. improves. Yeah. Because uh, a lot of this, uh, like, mindset of, like, especially students, uh, they have a very uh, kind of narrow mindset. They think, you know, like, uh -huh. doing videography is just making a All vlog, right. shooting, right. you know, on just on the land. But ah, they forgot right. that they can also shoot on all these other planes that you have mentioned. Yes. So yes. yeah, this kind of like a very good uh, eye opener for them, ah. right? So that yeah, you know, broaden the options instead of just ah, yes. the typical land shooting stuff. That's okay. Right. No, so, know that your yeah. planet is beautiful. Know that your planet is <laughs> huge, and every corner a videographer could go in there and film edit, share your videos, let the world see it, you know, and uh, get your name out there. Nice. All right. Um, yeah. So we come to uh, the end of this uh, broadcast. So um, we're going to go into a Q&A session, All right? So I do have a few questions here, All right, from the audience. Okay, so shall we start the questions, the Q&A? Mr. Baron, are you ready? Yes, ready. Okay, so the first one is, let me read here. 
I want okay. to be a film director. Whoa. How do I right. achieve that goal? All okay, right. So that is, yeah. So how is that? Yeah. Okay. So you want to be a film director. How do you achieve that goal? That was uh, the question that you have asked. And, you know, to be, to be anything, right, you need to copy lah. <laughs> <coughs> really, you, <coughs> sorry, you need to copy as in you need to learn from the best, right? So what I advise you, what do film directors do? Film directors make movies. So what I advise you is go and watch movies. If you want to be a film director, I really hope that you like movies. Okay, because if you do like movies, you shouldn't be liking movies. You, know? you should be movies. So because movies, that's why you want to become a film director. So go ahead and watch as many movies as possible. And we're not just talking about Hollywood movies. Hollywood, you know, movies from around the world. Korean, right? Um, Chinese your own local Malay movies, watch the good ones, learn, learn from it. Learn as in, what do you like about it? What do you like about it and how? You have to have the questions. Once you've watched the movies, then the questions will have to come. Like, how can I do this? How can I do that? Right? Ah. So these questions will prompt you to maybe sign up for an education that helps you to become a film director. Next, right, to become a film director, you need to, I said, uh, watch, watch, watch movies, right? Next, right, you need to be shoot, shoot, shoot. You need to shoot, shoot, shoot movies, as in your own adventures maybe, or your adventures with your friends. You need to shoot, shoot, shoot. Then you need to edit, edit, edit. Right, after you shoot, you need to edit, edit, edit. Then you need to share, share, share. Let everybody see your videos, see your movies. Mm -hmm. If it's negative criticism, Learn from it, right? So that's how you get your way to become a film director. You watch, watch, watch. You learn, learn, learn. You shoot, shoot, shoot. Edit, edit, edit. Then you share, share, share. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, uh. <laughs> that, that's a very, very, very good advice. <laughs> yeah, Nick, I mean, just like, keep making movies. Yeah, you need to keep on uh, making the things that you, you like. So, I mean, if you just watch, like watching it, but if you don't produce it, you know, you're not going to go anywhere. So you still need to produce, you know, mm. right? Mm. To make the film. Even mm. though it's a crappy film in the beginning, all right? Of course, first movie, I think a lot of the famous directors out there, their first movie is even, even like short films or even full feature films. It's not the best, right? So it's always a progress. So the more you do, the more you get better, the more knowledge and skill you, you obtain. And obviously, you get better at it. And that's where mm. you gain more experience. Lah. All right? Yeah. And become a good director. So, okay. So I guess uh, just to add on to that. So if you want to be known, uh, you know, by the thing that you have produced, uh, one suggestion is, of course, don't go and try to post it on a, try to sell it on a TV station, lah, right? <laughs> because uh, highly chances they're not going to buy it, uh, they, they're not going to air it. But nowadays, since we are in the digital age, we have social media, right? You can share it on Facebook, you can share it on YouTube, and it's free, and it's free. And, uh, you know, the, the eyes is like the a whole around the world. Is looking, we'll, we'll be looking at you. Not like if you sell on the TV station, for example, like TV3 or Astro, it will just be confined to Malaysia, right? You know, in, un, unlike YouTube, you can broadcast it all around the world, right? So who knows? Maybe Peter Jackson, you, you know, will spot your talent and uh, might want to offer you something. <laughs> who knows, all right? Okay, shall we move on to the second questions? Mr. Barry? Okay. Yes. Okay. Zanis, Second question is Can I use just my smartphone to make YouTube content or short film? If yes, what other equipment do I need to have? Hmm. We're getting equipment. All right. So it's the question is pretty awesome. Can I use my smartphone 
to make movies you should content videos, or short I, film uh, uh, basically to, to a, make small scale uh, I, film lah yeah all right can i use my smartphone to make videos to make my content if yes what are the additional items do i need to get okay so to to as starting as a starting point definitely use whatever you have with you whatever that is within your grasp use that if it is your smartphone use it if you're lucky you get a gopro camera use it if you're even lucky somebody left a dslr somewhere i mean maybe your dad left it somewhere lah not you picked it up use it <laughs> use whatever you have if it's a smartphone go ahead and grab it now um actually when you first start out right the most important as i mentioned earlier right the most important when you start out is not really your camera yet it is actually your notes as in your phone yes but not really the camera it's a is it's how you plan your story so using the notepad on your phone write out your story what you're going to shoot how long is it going to be shot what's the next shot what's the next shot how you create the story that is the most important actually then by looking at your story you know is it achievable right if it is then get your smartphone out and start shooting now when you already have when you're already shooting your video the next thing you're going to ask yourself is <clears throat> what do i need to get right okay what makes a video what makes a good quality video the question would be what makes a good quality video firstly is your video is going to be sharp lah okay a video that is blurred is not going to be usable it's going to be sharp it's got to be stable as in we don't want all this bouncing around action right so it's got to be stable and whatever audio that comes from the video like for example people talking it's got to be super clear so with that one more give you one more right the video cannot be like super dark or super bright it's got to be just right exposure when people look at it they feel nice so based on these four items to that makes a video good based on these four items that makes a video look good you already know what you're going to get to make the video to be stable you need a gimbal to make a video that is sharp you got to make sure you make sure that your focus is good to make a video that has clear audio you need to get a microphone and to make a video that is bright enough not too dark not too bright you need to be shooting in the right places okay so if a place is too dark maybe you need to get lights or maybe you need to shoot at a different time of the day or you need to choose a different location altogether yeah so that was my answer to your question lah pretty complex question and uh, most of yeah. what you ask will be covered uh, in Saito Uni mm -hmm. especially also we have our fast forward program you can also learn all these tips and tricks over there Yep, definitely. All right. Uh, I'm since I'm keeping the time here. Uh, we uh, do running short short of time. Uh, we got one more last question. Last question. All right. All right. The last copic questions for you. Ah. Uh. Uh, last right. question. Uh, yes. Is it necessary to get a diploma or degree in filmmaking to be in this industry? Okay. Right now, that yeah. question, right? Mm -hmm. uh, it's not necessary to get a degree or a diploma. It's not necessary, but because it is not necessary, you're going to be spending a lot of time trial and error. You're going to be you're going to be bumping into this, bumping into that, making mistakes here, making mistakes there, making mistakes here again, and then making mistakes there again, because you don't mm -hmm. have an education to guide you. which means you are taking the longer route you will get there you will get there yeah. eventually but are you willing to go through all these hard knocks along the way because a proper education will help you get there the fastest because we are here to guide you to help you succeed ah so yes mr yuzanis and education i feel is really necessary in order to avoid all the pitfalls along the way 
Yeah, I agree with that. Um, I also want to add that in Saito University College, we do have uh, the one that is related to it is a diploma in multimedia um, and also a degree in uh, digital creative media, uh, which is a bachelor in, digi in digital creative media. So in, in that course, you learn, uh, you have, uh, for example, like the diploma, you have two videography subjects, all right? Um, which is uh, quite uh, adequate for to, in, to equip you in terms of having the video production knowledge. But not just that, you have other subjects like storyboarding uh, to help you, uh, you know, in terms of doing the pre-production part as well. So, yeah. So, in Saito University College, we do offer something relatable to uh, video production and also offer additional more things all right so you're, you're you're not just if you just take a course that is like uh specifically like diploma in video production or or, or diploma in in film uh you might just learn about film because nowadays is the digital era so if you have more knowledge other than video production this will help you to you know gain more leverage all right so that you can actually do more than what traditional uh, filmmakers can do now, right? So yes, Mr. Baron, um, any last mm. words before we finish uh, our session here? So i let you give a final uh, last word, right? Yeah, so to our students, right? Um, just, just want to recap what we've learned. Videography, video production is a huge playing field. We have three different frontiers to explore, land, sea, and air. And each one requires different skill sets. And each one requires you to, well, it's all of it is fun. So each one, you take your pick where you want to go. Even on land, videography is huge. There's so many areas to explore, right? And we are here as your Educators, we are here to help you navigate this beautiful world of ours to help you into video production. So we're here. Now it's your turn. It's your world, so it's your turn. We're here. We're waiting for you. All right. Thank you, Mr. Baron, for attending this talk. It's very and sharing all this very fruitful knowledge. All right to the audience and yeah of course most of our not of, of our viewers are student itself uh and or maybe and you know a soon to be students all right of video productions so i thank you for your time mr baron so i'll see the rest of you guys again maybe in another topics all right so thank you for your time all right bye bye see you